They operate in plain sight. This is very nice girl. Open at all hours of the day and night. Hello. Massage parlors that advertise legitimate massages on the outside, but what happens inside some of these places is something more. We now realize that these are sophisticated, organized criminals. Prostitution with signs of human sex trafficking. For weeks, the Four Investigates team took undercover cameras inside massage parlors across Albuquerque. It didn't take much for some massage parlor workers to proposition our staff members for sex with a cost. At one massage parlor, our undercover staffer was required to pay $40 up front just to enter the parlor. That's called the house fee. Then the parlor worker used hand motions to offer sex acts if our staffer was willing to pay $40 more in a tip. No. Just, just yeah, yeah, yeah. To illustrate how big of a problem this is, we searched through city records and discovered 894 businesses are registered to do massage in Albuquerque. That's about five massage businesses for every square mile of the city. That of course includes legitimate businesses and spas, but that also includes massage parlors that offer sex acts to clients. It's important to understand that not all Asian massage parlors are doing illegal activity mm -hmm. um, because we've looked at them, but there's some that, we, that, of course, we have looked into that are. Anthony Mays leads the Human Trafficking Division at the New Mexico Attorney General's office. He says there are signs that many of the women offering sex acts are victims of human trafficking. What are some of the most obvious red flags or uh, activity that would suggest that there's a human trafficking situation. Well, the living conditions for sure. Our undercover cameras captured this in one location, beds in a small living space right across from massage rooms and a room for food storage. In another location, our cameras caught an open air shower. Commander Michel Garcia oversees the Albuquerque Police Department's vice unit. If the windows are all covered or darkened, um, you know what, that, that, that's a clue. Our cameras found that. If there's a, an inordinate amount of security cameras, both outside and inside, if the doors are locked and you have to buzz your way through. We found that too. If you are getting a massage for 40 bucks, um, that's a clue too, because um, most people when you go to a massage are, are, are a lot more expensive than that. How about 40? Or um, them saying that they're open 24 hours. The red flags are there. This problem is happening in our city and law enforcement will be the first to tell you that these problems have only gotten bigger in the last decade. And one of the reasons why is because for police, these cases are difficult to investigate. But can you point to any, any cases or investigations where you feel like uh, you were able to go in and, and get control of a certain problem as, re as it relates to massage parlors? Investigating these types of uh, businesses um, is, is very difficult, not just for, for the Albuquerque Police Department. Reason being is um, it's difficult uh, a lot of times to get the cooperation of the workers that, that work at these businesses. Both Commander Garcia and Agent Mays tell us sex workers often fear turning on their trafficker and refuse to help investigators or even accept help for themselves. Why do you think they deny the opportunity to get out of the situation? Um, it could be intimidation of the trafficker. The trafficker knows about, about their personal life. Um, the trafficker has control of their documents. Uh, they don't know anyone here in the States. They've been told by the trafficker that if law enforcement does help them, that they would be sent back to the country they came from. Attorney General Hector Balderas believes many traffickers are part of large international organizations. He says they recruit young women from Southeast Asia with false promises of big dreams in America. Once in the United States, Balderas says the women are moved from city to city in a circuit. If it's not drugs or gun running, uh, human sex trafficking is the third most profitable for organized criminals all the way around the world and we need to recognize that this is in our backyard and it needs to be a top priority. During this massage, our undercover staffer heard possible evidence Albuquerque may be on that circuit of cities. Oh, I've come to one night. One night? One night. 
In broken English, she told our undercover staffer she moved from Los Angeles. Another big problem, New Mexico law does not allow for the inspection of massage parlors. So what happens in here stays in here. But we have no authority to walk into the establishment and see what's going on. And so that really ties our hands. Marguerite Salazar is the superintendent over the New Mexico Regulation and Licensing Department. While New Mexico law does allow state inspectors to surprise inspect businesses like tattoo parlors and nail salons, massage parlors are not on that list. Do you fear that the human trafficking in New Mexico has exploded or has risen or has gotten more dangerous because we have not regulated this industry? I, I fear that because we don't know at this point and because we haven't been able to go in. So it could be much greater than we think. We Superintendent Salazar and Attorney General Hector Balderas are crafting a bill they intend to push in the next legislative session to give New Mexico the legal authority to inspect massage parlors. You know, we'd be able to tell just by doing a walk through whether it is a bona fide establishment and so that's what it would do it would then give us the power to shut them down in the meantime some of these businesses will continue operating as 21st century brothels and the women inside will continue their work as sex slaves chris ramirez for investigates